Hey everyone, this week I'm using a 200mm to capture a wide angle shot. How? Why? Keep watching to find out. So what on earth am I talking about? As we all know, 200mm is not a wide angle focal length. So how was I able to capture those wide images using the 200mm? Well, if you haven't already guessed it, it's panoramas. So capturing a series of images which I then stitch together in Lightroom to create a wider panorama. So that's what I want to talk about today. I went to Kerber Edge recently, I got some shots there. I took with me the Nikon Z7 and Nikkor 24 to 200 millimeter lens. So not all the shots are at 200 millimeters. I got a range of different shots at different focal lengths. And in between the footage of me capturing those shots, I'm going to show you how I merged them together in Lightroom and what settings I used for the various focal lengths I shot the images at. So let's take a look at the footage and some of those edits. Okay, so let's have a look at how these were merged together in Lightroom. These were captured at 91 millimeters, and all we need to do is select all of the images. So it's this five here. So we can do that by clicking on the first one, holding shift on the keyboard, clicking the last one, right click, and then if we come down to photo merge, we come across and down to panorama. There is an option for HDR panorama if you want to get more dynamic range in your image at the same time as creating a panorama. Today I'm just going to be concentrating on a regular panorama. So that will bring up this little window and in here we've got some options and we're going to get on to projections in a short while but before that I just want to talk about how you can fill the edges that are missing around the edges of this combined panorama. So We've got the boundary warp option, we've got fill edges and auto crop. If we look at auto crop first, if we just tick that box, you see it does what it says, it just crops the image, all of the blank space has been removed, but you do end up with quite a lot of the image being lost. So we've got these bits up here, this bit down here, and ideally it'd be nice to keep those. So we've got these two options remaining, boundary warp and fill edges. Boundary Warp will start to bend and stretch the surrounding blank areas until they stretch right to the edges. So it does a good job of filling those edges, but it does contort the image slightly. So it will depend on your image, the amount of images you've used, and the projection that you've used, which again we'll get onto shortly, but that will have varied results Sometimes it'll give you good results and sometimes bad. So finally we've got fill edges. If we tick this box, this is a generative fill which will automatically assess your scene and fill in those areas. But it is important to analyze this after you've merged it. So you can't really tell too easily in this little preview what's happened. It looks fairly good from here. But if we just click merge, you see up here we've got a little progress bar that's creating the panorama and when that's finished we'll be able to see the combined results. So that's popped up here now. So we just take this into develop now and if we zoom in, probably not quite that much, we can see that we do have quite a lot of repetition. Look at all these houses being repeated. It's the same house over and over and this area here looks quite odd. If we just uh, bring up the level slightly, we can see we've got some really strange repetition and banding down here now. So it doesn't always do a perfect job of cloning those areas, but depending on how you feel about generative AI, you can fix this in Photoshop by selecting this area and doing a generative AI fill on that. And 
that works much better than the cloning system in Lightroom and you'll get a result like I did in my final image which you can't really tell it's fake or real but again it all depends on your ethical stance on AI and how far you're going to take it. Me personally I'm, I feel I'm creating art here I don't really mind too much it's a fairly small portion of the image overall so I decided to use the generative fill on that. Okay, so this next shot was taken at 24 millimeters, so quite wide. So if we select all of these shots, there's nine of them. We can once again take that into Photo Merge Panorama. So you see we have a lot of warp in here, and that's because it's a wide angle shot. The wider your angle, the shorter your focal length, the more distortion you're going to get, and the more warping, kind of bulbous, spherical shape you're going to get. And we can mitigate that by choosing one of the different projections. So spherical is what we've got selected here. That's like placing all of your images onto the inside of a sphere. So it's cylindrical. As the name suggests, it's like placing all the images onto the inside of a cylinder. So not a huge difference, but depending on the images that you've captured, this will make quite a big difference because it will keep all of the verticals upright and vertical basically. So if you're doing architecture, that kind of thing, and you want your verticals to be as straight as possible, cylindrical is the way to go for that one. And then we've got perspective. And you see with this image, it's so wide that we can't even choose perspective. But we'll come back to that one later. For now, I'm just gonna choose cylindrical. And I'm going to choose fill edges. And we're ready to merge that one now. So not too bad, especially considering this was a wide angle series of shots, but it is on a little bit of a slant and there is still a little bit of distortion there. So but we can try and fix that a little bit by coming down to transform and you can try different options here, but I usually just go with auto to start with. And you see that's done a pretty good job already. It's leveled it up. There's just some very faint distortion still. It's hard to tell because the horizon might actually get lower at the edges, but there probably is still just a little bit of distortion there. We could come into lens corrections and just change the amount of distortion correction here. So that's maybe not too bad. Just have to crop the edges off. And there you go, not looking too bad. Okay, so I've already brought this one into Merge, and all I want to talk about here is the Create Stack option. If we tick this and then merge our image, you'll see Lightroom makes a little handy pile of all nine shots plus the merged image. So we can look at that by clicking on the little icon of the stack. That'll pull all the images out, so you see them all here, like so. So it's just a really neat way of keeping everything together 
so that you know which images you used to create which panorama. Okay, so next up is our 200 millimeter shot. We've got five images here. Let's bring that into merge. So you'll notice with this one, we've got much less blank space around the edge. Even with spherical, very little there. And we can actually now choose perspective and it's cut much better with that. And that's because we've got that 200 millimeter telephoto focal length. With the wide angle, you've got so much barrel distortion that Lightroom struggles to work out which bits to put together, but because we're using that focal length, we've still got that really wide shot, but it fits together really well, and you can use perspective, which often gives you better results, I find. So I'm just gonna fill those edges. Obviously we've got less to fill now because there's less blank space. Let's merge that. And if we just bring that into develop, you can see there was a lot of work to be done on this. Because I'm shooting into the sun, I'm not using a grad filter. We've got that bright sky I've exposed for the sky, trying not to blow out the highlights, but that's meant I've got a really dark foreground. So I did have to do a lot of work on this to come up with the final image that you saw. But in the end, I was really pleased with it actually. So finally we've got this one which was captured at 51 millimeters. Actually got 11 shots here and that's because these were taken in a vertical portrait orientation. So because it's portrait we've got the height but the width is narrower and therefore I've had to take more shots to get that full width. But we'll bring that now into photo merge panorama and so you can see with this one perspective it's having a really distorted effect on the image. And the way to go here, I think, is spherical. Spherical is a really good option for images where you've got the verticality, where you're using two different dimensions, both vertical and horizontal. So because this was captured in a vertical format, we've got that height. And because it's projecting it on the inside of a sphere, you've got that curvature going to the left and the right, but also to the top and the bottom. So it's also really good for if you're taking a panorama in a series of rows. So you could have one, two, three shots at the top, one, two, three in the middle, and then a bottom row of three. Put all those together in merge panorama and spherical will most often give you the best results there. So once again, fill edges, merge, and choosing to shoot the individual shots vertically means that you end up with an image combined that's often a similar ratio to a typical standard shot, albeit it's got much more resolution. You can really zoom into this. You can go even further with this. We've got a little bit of noise there, but loads of detail in those houses, which is so far away in the distance. So in the end, I did actually crop the bottom of this image off because I decided that the sky was probably the key element of this image. We didn't really need all this foreground where there's not much going off. But it's good to have that option to have the height as well as the width and shooting vertically, portrait format, can uh, give you some really good options there. So what are some of the benefits of capturing panoramas? Well, for a start, you don't need to take as many lenses with you. You can just take your telephoto or a medium focal length lens and leave your wide angle at home 
you're going to get much higher resolution images because when you combine those together you've got many more pixels in there and that's really good for printing. You're also going to get better edge to edge sharpness in your image because most lenses tend to get softer towards the corners. So if you're only shooting one shot with one lens, you're going to see that softness around the edges. Whereas when you've got multiple shots, you tend to only combine the central portions of the images anyway. So you've got all that sharpness there and then combined that extends all the way to the edges. And also you don't get any of the barrel distortion that you get with a wide angle lens. But it's not all good. What about the negatives? You can't frame up your image the way you would with a normal shot. So you have to kind of imagine what the final image is going to look like once you've pieced all of those separate shots together. Also, you've got editing time when you get home and it's going to use a lot more resources on your computer because you've got much more, like I said, many more pixels in your images. That's taking more RAM and processing power. And it's also going to take up much more disk space on your computer as well. It's not very good for moving subjects. So if you've got cars or birds, for example, you might get those on separate shots and it's going to look odd when you combine those together and you might have to remove them. And finally, you might actually want the wide angle effect because you've got foreground subjects, you want to emphasize that, or you want the distortion. So that's a choice you have to make. But being able to create panoramas is a really good skill to have. And it's good to get into the habit of capturing multiple shots. So once you've framed up your scene, get your shot and then maybe take one or two either side of that. Because who knows, later on, when you get home, you might just want to see a little bit more of that scene. And if you've got those images, then you're able to do that. There's just one more shot to show you, it's one of my faves, so I'll put that on screen now. And so that's about it for another video. As always, a huge thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the subscribe button or over here on this picture of me and that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time so I hope you'll join me next week for the next one but until then thanks a lot everyone and bye for now